Another big factor affecting color is the amount of light that's around. On a nice starlit evening, astronomy enthusiasts love to take out their telescopes and look for galaxies and nebulae. The space scenes are often gray and fuzzy. Why? Because these celestial wonders are so incredibly far away, and their light is very faint. To gather more light, big telescopes take long exposure pictures and create these rich and vivid space shots. Walk around during the night, or enter any dark room, and watch all the pretty colors turn into faint shades of gray. Color can be tricky too, like the sky. Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it looks red. Why? <laughs> to answer this, we need a different perspective. As sunlight passes through our atmosphere, it's the shorter blue waves from the sun's spectrum that react the most with the countless air molecules in our atmosphere. The air is constantly absorbing and scattering this blue light. The longer waves of red light do not react much and just pass on through and we don't see them. So why are sunsets red? Well, let's spin the earth and find out. During a sunset, we are looking through more air molecules, 40 times more. The blue light still scatters, but is all dispersed out at a short distance. It is only red light that can slip all the way through the air at this long distance. And we see absolutely spectacular sunsets. Through these prehistoric woods, we find a small dinosaur, a Cynosauropteryx. Scientists have recently discovered the actual color of this ancient reptile. Close analysis of its fossil revealed the small creature had reddish brown and white stripes. What evolutionary advantage these colors played for this small dinosaur is still a mystery. So far we have seen an amazing array of colors. However, there is one huge color factor we haven't considered yet. The human eye. Light enters our eye through the pupil, the dark circle at the center. The iris is the muscle tissue that surrounds the pupil and gives us our eye color. The iris dilates, meaning it expands the pupil when we enter dark areas allowing us to see shades of gray and black. The eye's protective covering is the cornea. Together with the lens, the cornea bends and focuses light. The lens allows us to see clearly up close or far away. The retina is at the back of our eye. It contains millions of remarkable photoreceptors called rods and cones the sensitive rods let us detect motion, allow us to see in the dark, and give us peripheral vision. The tiny little cones, they give us the color. The optic nerve then takes these electrical impulses from the retina to the brain, and builds incredible images of a wonderful, colorful universe. far we have only talked about the visual part of the spectrum, from the hotter violet to the cooler red. 
but there's a universe of energies that we can't see. You've heard of them. Gamma and X-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, and micro and radio waves. We call this the electromagnetic spectrum. An X-ray picture reminds us of the doctor visit. Radio waves allow us to hear our favorite tunes. Won't you please take me along for Microwaves cook our food. Wi-Fi waves from our router connect us to the internet. A cell phone rings. Someone is sending us some microwaves. A car goes by using radio waves for its GPS system. Infrared waves from the remote turn on the TV. We live in a chaos of electromagnetic waves. Let's investigate this invisible universe a little more with some spectrum talk. Like, uh, hello out there, I'm a radio. I'm the longest wavelength. You know all about me, cruising down the road, checking out some tunes. Now, some dudes called radio astronomers like to capture my wavelengths from space. All these cool radioscopes are called karma. They work together to study the cold universe. I'm telling you, these radio emissions come from molecules, dust, and energy from the early universe. Hey, check out the planets Venus and Saturn in radio light. These false color images denote different temperature levels. Don't the pictures remind you of the weather folks who track storms? These radar or radio images detect things like how much it's raining or snowing. Hoo wee! You gotta dig these colorful radio sites. Smokes! I think these firefighters need me! I'm infrared, also known as heat energy. See that infrared thermal imager? Watch carefully. There, there! See the firefighter? The camera spots him right through the thick smoke. Look at the screen again. See those flames? Now, look in the hallway. No flames. Infrared displays differences in temperature. It can identify hot flames hiding behind rolling smoke or locate someone trapped in a smoky fire. Infrared can literally be a lifesaver. Infrared helps astronomers all the time. Here's Orion in visible light. Here he is again, captured by an infrared telescope. What a difference! The oranges and yellows indicate there's a bunch of cool gas and dust that's not hot enough to shine visually. Now, we're looking toward the center of our galaxy. Visible light on top. versus infrared on the bottom. Thanks to me, infrared, we can see the invisible. All right, all right. I can be a little excitable. I'm ultraviolet. 
a higher energy wavelength. Yeah, yeah, I can be harmful to human skin, but I can help you too. Like spotting counterfeit money, banks, businesses, use me, UV, all the time. Pass a few hundred dollar bills under my light to see if they're legal. Those look good. What? A thousand dollar bill? That one is fake. Recently, the Swift Space Observatory imaged 20,000 different sources of ultraviolet energy from the Andromeda Galaxy. Astronomers then pieced together this colossal cosmic puzzle. This ultraviolet view uncovers hot young stars and dense star clusters. Ultraviolet reveals what was once concealed. You are like so familiar with me. Ever been to the doctor, dentist? Ever had an x-ray? <sighs> My frequency is so strong, I can penetrate right to your bone. That's somebody's hip there. Ouch! Looks like they had a hip replacement, but looks like he's getting better thanks to me. X-ray! That's the ball. A black hole is a great example of me. The monstrous gravity comes from the death of a huge star. As surrounding gas and dust falls into that vicious vortex at the center, it swirls faster and faster, fantastically fast. This space dust starts to bump into each other at ferocious speeds. These collisions produce lots of me. X-rays. Look out! me chattering, talking to you fast. I'm a gamma ray. I'm not like the most energetic part of the spectrum and the most dangerous, like with these nuclear explosions. Whoa! We obviously have to be very, very, very careful. Very careful. But, but on the flip side, my power can be incredibly helpful. Gamma rays can kill cancerous cells, help shrink tumors, so people can really like me, even though I talk so fast. I mean, I know I talk fast, but I've always been gamma ray. I always talk fast. In space, I spill out like crazy in supernova explosions and in gamma ray bursts, which to this day, gamma ray bursts are still sort of a mystery to your astronomers. Solving all the unknowns of exploding stars will help humans better understand the origin and the size of this fantastic, magnificent, awesome universe.